Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a live recording of a 50 minute full body flexibility practice. I do use my block and my bolster today. A little bit of space to move is always good too. And let's get started. So, um, if you do have a block and a cushion to use today. Pick one if you want to lay on something. I'm going to lay on my pillow to start. Have your other props off to the side if you like to have other things close by. And we'll start laying down as we always do. So you can go in heads. And maybe bend your knees and walk your feet a little bit closer towards your hips. Maybe wiggle around a touch if you're laying on top of something. Your arms can come out a little bit wider, maybe letting your palms face up. And then if you do want to make a diamond shape with your legs, let your knees start to open up. Lightly rest the soles of your feet together. You need to slide your feet a little further from your hips. It's a nice snug diamond right now because you might have scooched your feet a little closer before you open the knees. Just notice, adjust as needed. And let your eyes close. Without changing your breath. Just start to notice it. Feel it. Maybe it is quiet enough around you that you can hear it. Just allowing yourself to settle in and maybe find some stillness throughout your body. And no need to put any effort into your breath, but just continue to notice it. Let your thoughts slow down. Your body start to relax, soften. And stay for just another few breaths. No effort required. Unless it helps keep you focused, keep you relaxed. And slowing down your day. And it feels right to do so. You can start to maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes. 
Let your knees out wide or your legs out long. Just start to bring everything back in so that your knees are bent, your feet are planted. You have your arms out really wide. You might bring them a little bit closer to your side. And then if you'd like to come off of whatever you are laying on, we'll just come back down, laying flat on our backs. And you can either keep your knees bent and your feet planted or rock side to side with your knees, maybe coming towards the chest. Just take a moment, feel your back pressing down into the ground. Maybe keeping your eyes closed. And when you feel good to roll over or rock yourself forwards, we're going to come into tabletop onto our hands and knees. <clears throat> so once you're over, once you're up, you could take a few more rocks of the knee, uh, rocks of the hips, sway of the hips side to side. And then we'll just start to turn our fingers, turn them out to the sides, pointing to the edges of your mats. Or maybe you will keep going and point your fingers towards your knees. Feel free to do one hand at a time or both. Just trying to connect your palms down. Feel a nice stretch through your wrists, your forearms. Maybe let your head get a little bit heavier. Just noticing your breath again. No need to change anything. Just feel it. Enjoy the stretch. If you are doing one hand at a time, you can switch sides. And if you're doing both and feel good to stay, let's stay. Gently pressing your palms down. And trying to relax through the rest of your body. Stay for just another breath or two here. And then you can start to come off of your hands or maybe it's just one hand. Maybe you'll sit back on your heels or just stand on your knees for a moment. But if you want to take some wrist circles or give your forearm a little massage, shake it out a little bit. And then we're going to be making our way into a lunge. If you've got some props to use today, have them close by the top of your mat. Specifically, I'm going to use my block. <clears throat> but you might use your pillow or nothing at all, of course. <laughs> but let's start with our left foot coming forwards and into our lunge. So sinking those hips forwards, maybe your hands are on the ground, maybe your hands are resting on top of something, just finding that right hip flexor. You might uh, untuck the toes, maybe push into the foot a little, lift your knee for a moment, just drop it back down, stay nice and light through your knee. If you need some extra cushion, you could roll your mat over, maybe you've got a towel of some kind you can throw under your knee. But options to stay in the lunge with your foot 
in the middle of your mat. If you would like to come into lizard, we can heel toe our left foot off to the side towards the edge of your mat and maybe turn your foot so your toes are kind of pointing out on an angle a little bit. And then if you can bring your hands under your shoulders to the ground or on top of something, check in with your right knee or back knee if you need to lift it for a second, take the weight out of it, and then gently rest back down. You can do that too. Feeling those hips, softening those hips. And then if you have something to use, so we're going to have a few options here. <laughs> we can stay on our hands if you have something to maybe rest your forearms on, whether it's a pillow or a block, now, depending on how soft your pillow is, may not actually be very useful. But it could bring you halfway down, lowering the chest, getting into your hips a little bit more if you're in the lizard. You could have your forearms on the ground or you could stay on your hands. Then we have another option. You can stay where you are, or we can find a lounging lizard. So if you want to kind of tip over onto your right hip, let your left foot kind of move. It's gonna stay connected to the ground though. And then if we can be on our right hip, seen this before, you can stay on your right hand, maybe your right forearm can rest either on the ground or on something. I'm gonna place my block under my forearm. So I'm on the right hip, the left foot is here. If you need to scooch it down a little bit, you can, but try to keep it kind of close to the top half of your mat instead of letting your foot go all the way down to the bottom so that maybe you still feel the glute, the hip. You might even hold your foot. If it's sliding on you if you're wearing socks and it's sliding a little. You might even heel toe your foot back a little closer to the top of your mat. Maybe not. Just take a moment, if you are in this lounging lizard, you might be feeling a side stretch. Your left hand is free to move. We might bring it behind us. The hand maybe to the low back or to the left hip. Maybe your fingertips can touch the ground behind you. And then instead of looking and twisting towards the bottom of our mat, we're just gonna try to bring that left shoulder forwards so that maybe we can look forwards. Maybe feeling something else through that left shoulder. Maybe a side stretch. And then I know a lot of us are in very different places right now. So we're going to be meeting in tabletop. However you most gracefully want to get there, if you are in lounging lizard with me, just make sure that you bring your left hand forwards. I'm just going to slide my left leg down to the bottom of my mat and then tip over and into tabletop. But if you're coming from a lunge, you can push yourself back. You can find your tabletop. <clears throat> We're going to come on to our knees, maybe give the hips a little bit of a sway side to side. We will be just switching to the other side. So if you know that you're going to want to use some props or no props, just have, have what you need close by, have what you don't need out of the way. Our right foot can come forwards setting up a lunge and maybe you stay here the entire time and it gets quite intense because we're here for a little bit unless you're traveling through all the options it might feel like a really long hold but breathe embrace it feel that nice hip flexor stretch <clears throat> if you need to lift your back knee for a moment add a cushion roll your mat over you can do that Another breath here in the lunge with our foot in the middle of the mat. And then if you are going to be 
exploring that lizard pose. You can start to heel toe your foot off to the right side. Turn your foot out so it's on a bit of an angle. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Maybe a little pop of that back knee. And then gently place it down. Give your hips a chance to soften a little bit. Same thing with your shoulders. Let your shoulders fall from your ears. Maybe you're going to stay on your hands. Maybe you're going to lower down onto the forearms or onto something. And if the lounging lizard is not for you, if your legs, your hips didn't like it, you can stay where you are, or maybe you're going to start to kind of tip over towards the left side gracefully. Tip on over, let your right foot move, and then you can always bring it back. Take your time, come on to that left hip, decide what your left hand is going to do. Maybe you're on your hand, maybe you're on your left forearm, on something or on the ground. <clears throat> Make some little adjustments to your right foot. Maybe it's going down a little, maybe it's scooching back up. Maybe you'll hold your foot. Maybe you will start to take your right hand behind you. Maybe to the hip, to the low back, or to the ground, whatever happens. You might look down to your bottom foot, the bottom of your mat first, and then you might start to look the other way. Kind of bringing the right shoulder forwards a little bit. Might feel a little different. Looking forwards and looking down or behind you. And then we're just going to start to make our way out and all the way back into our tabletop. So make sure both of your hands are in front of you. If you're in your lounging lizard, you might slide your leg back and then pop up into your tabletop. But let's all meet there. Giving your hips a little bit of a sway side to side. Shake it out a little. We are going to be coming onto our tummies next and doing that lovely uh, stretch for the front of our neck. If you have a block to use, you can use it. If you don't have a block to use, you can use your hands. You can use your hands. But we're going to come onto our tummies first. <clears throat> and if you don't have a block, just rest your jaw in your, or maybe it's more your chin. In your palms though. And just let the front of the neck lengthen. Let the back of the head try to find the top of the shoulders. <clears throat> if you have a block to use, you can pick which height you are on. I like to do the high side. I also like to lean my block so it's kind of balancing on one edge and leaning away from me. It's just a little bit nicer of an angle, I think, with a stretch for the neck. And then you can either hold your block or if your arms are free and available to move, you might reach them out in front, letting the shoulders fall from the ears, relaxing through your body, and maybe even closing your eyes here. Enjoy a few breaths. If you are clenching your teeth together at all, maybe opening your mouth ever so slightly.
And if you do have your hands away from your block, just bring them back there. And then we can all just lift our chin up a little. Take whatever was holding your head up, your chin up, out. Maybe just stacking the palms and resting your forehead on top, bringing the length back into the neck. Relaxing through your shoulders. Just notice what you're feeling throughout the neck, the head, maybe even down your spine. We're going to stay on our tummies. Let's start to bring our left leg out to the side for a half frog. So you can slide your knee out to the side. Maybe it's in line with your hip. Maybe it's not quite that far. But do the same thing with your foot too. Bring your foot out to the left side. Maybe you can make a nice 90 degree angle with that left leg if you want to get a little specific. But just letting that left hip stay as close to the ground as it can, the inner thigh connected to the ground too, as best it can. You can relax your upper body here. You can stay resting on your belly, your chest. You do feel good to lift the chest and find your forearms. You can add your sphinx into this half frog, which is an option. <clears throat> and if you are going to lift onto your forearms, make sure your left hip is happy. Tuck your elbows under your shoulder. Give your glutes a little bit of a squeeze. Gently drop the shoulders from your ears. Get to feel the love through your back. Stay for just another inhale if you've got your chest lifted right now. And then you can slowly start to lower your chest down if it's up. Stay in your half frog leg a little bit longer if you're good to do so. Your right leg can stay relaxed and down or you could start to lift that foot up. Maybe see how close you can get your heel to your glute without touching it. Just a little squeeze of the hamstring, a little squeeze of that right glute. You can keep the right leg just floating, or maybe you're going to reach back and try to grab it just for a moment. Hug the heel a little closer towards your glute. And then if you did add your right leg in, you can slowly start to release that foot all the way back down. Once it's touching, we can start to slide our left leg in, maybe all the way until the big toes are touching. If you want to give your hips a little bit of a sway side to side, you could do that too. Or just be still. When the right leg is ready to move out to the side, set up your half frog. Maybe take a peek at the knee. Where is it exactly? Send your foot out to the right side as well. So we're feeling the hip, the inner leg, maybe other places. Relaxing through your upper body if you'd like. If you do want to come back up and onto your forearms, add your sphinx in. 
Tuck the elbows under the shoulders. Your palms face down. Your glutes a little bit of a squeeze. Drop your shoulder. Maybe close your eyes or just look down. And if you are lifted on your forearms right now, just another inhale. As you exhale, start to relax your chest again. Staying in that half frog leg. If you want to start to float your left foot, see how close you can get the heel to the glute without touching it. And then just hang out there or maybe try to reach for your foot. Just an option. Maybe you can't quite catch it. Maybe you do. But gently starting to let that left foot go back down to the ground. If you did lift it, slow, slow, slow. Once it's down, your right leg can start to slide back in as well. Maybe the big toes come all the way together. Maybe a gentle sway of the hips side to side. When you are ready to bring your hands under your shoulders, we're going to push ourselves back up into tabletop. <clears throat> From here, maybe you'll wiggle around a little bit more. And then we're going to be reaching our arms out in front. For a puppy dog stretch, you can either have your arms straight out in front, or if you want to add a side stretch here, we're going to take our hands off to the left side, letting the chest get heavy. If you happen to have a block to use today and you want to raise your hands up on it, whether you are reaching forwards or off to the side, you can add that in. Totally optional though. The higher the hands are, the higher the chest will be and the more distance you've got to go to melt it down. So you might feel more of a stretch, <laughs> but it's totally optional. Go for some nice long arms though. Nice heavy chest, high hips. And if you did go off to the sides, we'll lift back up to switch. And if you are straight forwards in a traditional puppy dog, you can stay or you could take a break, but move slowly, especially if you are using a block. <laughs> Reaching your arms off to the right side this time, whether they are on the ground or on a block. Nice long arms, high hips. Let your chest get heavy. Wherever you happen to be right now, 
you're in some sort of puppy dog, let an inhale lift you up. Bring your hands back in and under your shoulders, tabletop. Maybe take a sway. We're just going to push back and into child's pose for a moment. Let your knees come out wide. Send your hips back if you want something to go under your forehead. Maybe it's your arms or a prop. Let the chest come down. Relax for a moment. Let your head be heavy. Take all of the weight out of your neck. So ideally resting your forehead on something. When you are feeling ready to move again, you can start to lift back up. <clears throat> We're going to be turning over and onto our backs. And I'm going to use my block to go under my low back today into the hard the hard blocks these days if you want a pillow to go under your hips you could do that too and then if you want to be flat on your back that's also an option because we're going to be bringing one knee at a time towards the chest so you definitely do not have to have your hips lifted up for this so we're going to come down onto our backs first make sure you're laying down step one <laughs> Bend your knees, plant your feet. We'll be bringing our right knee towards our chest, just giving it a hug, maybe sending your left leg out long. So if you want to be flat, you be flat. If you want to place a soft pillow under your hips for a little bit of a back bend, you can do that too. And if you want to send or place a nice hard block under your back, you've got some different heights to choose from so you can decide how high that block might be. But if you're lifting your hips on a block, take your time, bring the knee towards the chest and it might not come very close to the chest, depending on how high your hips are lifted. You don't actually have to hold your knee. You could just let it float there. Your left leg, again, depending on how high your hips are, might stay bent, might slide out a little longer. But just a moment here to hug your right knee towards your chest. Relax the rest of your body as best you can. Just keeping your right knee where it is. You might start to bend your left leg back in first. Maybe the right knee can come a little closer to the chest. Maybe not. And then just gently let your right knee go. So that both of your feet are planted, your knees are bent. Take a second. We are going to be switching sides. Left knee can start to lift. 
give your hips a chance to relax a little. If you want to straighten your right leg, you're going to be holding your left knee. A few moments. Hugging the knee and then trying to relax everything else. We're keeping the left knee, but you might start to bend the right one back in if it's out long. And maybe the left knee moves a little closer to the chest. Maybe it doesn't. Just another breath here, and then you can start to let your left knee go. You have your hips resting on something. Stay for just a moment longer. Bending the knees, planting the feet. And then we can start to take whatever may be under you out, off to the side. Bring your low back down. Maybe the knees stay pointing up. Maybe they come towards your chest, both of them. If you want to add a gentle sway of the knee side to side, you can do that too. Give your low back a gentle massage, especially if you were lifted up on something. And then we can start to let our knees fall over towards the left side. Let's do a twist. Letting the knees tip over. Rotating the hips. But reaching your arms out to weigh down your shoulders. If you wanted to cross your legs in any way, you can add that in. Just closing your eyes, though. Breathe just a little bit deeper. Maybe for the first time in this practice today. Let's use an inhale to lift the legs back up, out of the twist. Take a moment just to connect your low back again. Maybe a gentle sway of the knees, maybe just be still. When you are ready to twist, your knees can start to fall to the other side. Maybe you're crossing your legs. Maybe you're not. Just turn the hips a little. 
Rest the shoulders. And breathing just a little bit deeper. And let your next inhale help you lift your legs back up again out of your twist. Maybe planting the feet, connecting the low back. Gentle sway of the knees, maybe side to side. And if you want to keep your feet on the ground, you can. Maybe you'll find a diamond shape with your legs. Maybe you will lift your knees back towards your chest, floating the feet. Might open your knees out wider, letting your big toes stay together. Or maybe you'll take this all the way into happy baby. If you are holding your feet in happy baby and start to let your big toes fall back together, but maybe keep the knees out wide just a little longer. You recline child's pose. You still have your knees out wide. You might start to bring them back together. Maybe another rock side to side. And if the feet are still lifted up into the air, you can bring them down. We can decide if Shavasana today will be you laying flat on your back. You want to bring a pillow or something underneath, maybe your knees or your head. Just find a comfortable place to spend these last few moments. Or you can be still. Let your body breathe without any effort from you.
slowly start to deepen your breath a little bit. Bring that effort back in for a breath or two. Start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Maybe you'll be reaching your arms above your head to take a big stretch. Eventually bending your knees so that you can roll over to one side. Find your way up and into a comfy seat. When you're ready, let's close your eyes one last time and take a deep breath in to lengthen your spine, a deep breath out. Awesome practice, you guys. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Until next time, namaste.